This program was produced in part with grant support from the Kentucky Humanities Council and the National Endowment for the Humanities. What my grandmother did for me and my great-great-grandmother, who was, uh, whose mother was a slave, uh, she would sing the spirituals, which have always be been kind of innate, and I, I understood exactly what she was singing, even as a small child, and she would put me on her knee, and she would bump, she would rock me back and forth, instead of singing uh, something about rock a -bye baby in the tree treetop she would sing if i got my ticket lord can i ride if i got my ticket lord can i ride and there we would be i would be on her knee and the rhythm would be there and we'd be bumping and just a semblance of the juba juba padding and so forth that i've come into contact now with with reading and understanding what was going on so that's the way that i would fall asleep in the evening and uh so the spiritual is just a very strong part of my heritage. What's your favorite kind of black music? I like it all, believe it or not. Uh, but if I have to perform it, it goes again back to the spiritual. I like it because um, of its long flowing line, its, its, its melodic sweep, and uh, you, it's, there's just something very emotional about it that, that I can relate to and um, I romanticize a lot and when I hear a song with a melody like uh, still away still away still away to Jesus there's just something magic about that and what can be more beautiful? So simple, and yet so very, very pleasing. Let's talk about the history of black music for a little while. Had it not been for those oppressive slavery days, do you think that blacks would have developed the distinctive style of music that they did? No, oh, I think the style was, was with us from, from our voyages from Africa, and especially in its elements of rhythm and syncopation and so forth. But I think naturally the oppression lent to the, um, the abundance and the deep affectation of, the, of the, the lyrics and the melodies per se. So I, I think that definitely slavery contributed a lot to the prospering of the spiritual and to the form that it has now. Instead of being so religious as most people think. Do you believe the slaves used the biblical and the religious references more as symbolism in the spirituals? Oh, a lot of times, but uh, it is difficult to, to put something in a nutshell and say that something meant um, one thing all of the time. There were religious connotations as well as social and political connotations. Um, some of the hitting images like in Deep River this morning you will hear um, the illusion of uh, my home is over Jordan could have been escaped to the north at any time so there were a lot of hidden meanings in the uh, spirituals
One is the relationship between the Negro spiritual and the modern gospel song. The main relationship, well, the spiritual, as I've said, is um, more uh, on the European style. Uh, it has the long flowing melody, melodic line. Gospel is more on the rock and roll or upbeat kind of tempo line. And also the spiritual is reflective of, uh, is known as the sorrow song in most instance, instances. And you will see uh, in, in I Want Jesus to Walk With Me and City Called Heaven and so forth that there is a very mournful kind of quality about the spiritual. Gospel music is there's a brighter day of head, there's, it's filled with optimism, a new life, a new world, and so it's just very happy and gay. Who are some of the arrangers of black spirituals? Uh, uh, Hall Johnson, uh, Edward Boltner, and John Carter, Florence Price, and, and numerous others, and uh, Dawson, of course. But um, the songs that, that are some of my favorite are, are arrangements by Hall Johnson, such as, um, as I've said probably before, we City Called Heaven, Honor, Honor, His Name So Sweet. And, and now Honor, Honor and His Name So Sweet are rather gay. And in, in these songs, you will hear call-response kinds of patterns. And you know what I mean by call-response. No, okay. Ahead. Say, for ex example, I'm the leader. And I may some say something like, this little light of mine. And you will say, I'm going to let it shine. That's the response. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Well, now, in these, the, the Hall Johnson arrangements are a little bit more sophisticated in that I don't, since I don't have the group of people there to respond and, and answer, the piano takes up that kind of, uh, of response. And uh, the texture is basically very simple, you know, chordal, uh, very homophonic. And so you will hear the response, but only in solo voice, especially in his honor, honor. Um, oh, run along, children, and be baptized. Might it bring me to by the water's side? You will not hear the, oh, run along, children, and be baptized. That could be the leader. The response could be, might it bring me to by the water's side? And we all go, honor. To the dying lamb. In the thicket and the by the water side, to see the little children when they truly baptize. Our Lord, our Lord, and to the dying lamb. In Jesus' lips and the by the water side, to see the little children when they truly baptize. Our Lord. 
Boatner's song, which is probably his most popular, that I want Jesus to walk with me, you get your, again, the, the minor quality, the mournful quality. And the, the spirituals, as I said, are very generalized, and they carry a, a wide uh, range of themes that, that, all, that just tell of the emotional op oppression of, of peoples and it, of, of peoples in general and it doesn't relate to any one specific incident per se. And you will hear this in Boltner's arrangements and he uses the, the throbbing chords of the piano that kind of let you know that, gosh, this is really heartbreaking. And it begins very easily and all of a sudden the piano comes in with a block chord accompaniment, accompaniment that kind of lets you know that, oh gosh, this is terrible this is this is really sad and so he begins with i want jesus to walk with me and we must notice that when the spiritual begins to um, take hold the line becomes very elongated and we get into the differentiation uh, that, that makes the, the spiritual more Europeanized than, than black, and we began to see the synthesis of the blending of, of the two cultures, the, the African culture and, and the uh, European culture. And 
and uh, then we get, have um, John Carter, is just a very fabulous, flamboyant, I think, and one of my favorite uh, contemporary uh, pianist composer who was educated at Oberlin Conservatory of Music. And what he has done is taken some of the traditional um, spirituals and given them fancy titles like Rondo to depict a specific European form uh, with, divided into various sections. And he has taken it and combined it with extended chords and tone clusters and has um, incorporated African rhythms and so forth with uh, just a very simple melody. Peter, go ring the dim bells. Oh, Peter, go ring the dim bells. To come up with a very, very flashy kind of setting that is very simple, but again, puts the spiritual uh, on a, a, an art song level. Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. Peter, go ring them bells. Oh, Peter, Frederick Douglass said, every tone was a testimony against slavery. 
and a prayer to God for deliverance. Do you think the spiritual was almost totally a reflection of how the slave was treated by his master? It was a total reflection of, of how he was treated and what he wanted uh, for himself. In, in, the, in the future, he wanted freedom. It was, it was a reflection of his circumstances then, but it was also optimism and hope for a better life. Would it be correct then to say that the spiritual is the folk song no, of the black people? Very, yes, it is. And along with the blues, of course. Isn't it really hard to draw a line between some of the blues music and some of the spirituals? Yes, it is. It, it is very hard to delineate between because, as we know, the blues are, are hopeless, despairing kinds of songs, and so are the, the spirituals. Uh, they both utilize the blue tonality, the vacillation between major and minor, and just the mournful kind of quality. The only thing that makes it di different is that the blues is more worldly oriented, and uh, the, the spiritual is, usually has a religious connotation. What are the special characteristics of blues music? Basically, um, a three-line stanza, and uh, it usually deals with um, a hopeless despair kind of thing also, but in the connotation of someone having lost his love, his loved one, or some, um, the loved one having, uh, <laughs> what do you say, gone out and, and played around a little bit and caused someone's heart to break. The blues kind of originated from the field cries and the street hollers and so forth, and you would get a various sliding kind of elements and slurred kind of elements, and that kind of thing. So uh, I, I don't really <laughs> have any typical examples, but um, it's just expressing hopeless despair, and it's just what it says. You feel blue, you blue. Other than the blues, which are the sad love songs. Um, did the blacks, and especially the slaves, have very many love songs? No. They're, they couldn't really love. They were always um, being auctioned off. Families were continuously uh, separated, so there was nothing to sing about <laughs> in terms of, of love. And um, as a consequence, we don't have uh, any very many love songs. What do you think is the greatest contribution that black music has given to this country? I think it has just given um, America its nationalistic stance. Uh, we, the minstrel show, uh, is credited with bringing the, the semblances of anything that can really be called American, and it all stems from the, the plantation songs and of the black man, and the spirituals, and the blues, and so forth. And it is credited with uh, being the first source of American musical theater. So I think with all this degradation, that is the one positive thing that, that we did. We did make a contribution uh, no matter what, and it gave America its stamp, its brand, its brand name. Was it painful for you to do this research by constantly being reminded of how your ancestors had to live for so many years. Yes, it, it, it really was painful. Sometimes um, it made you feel, made me feel awfully bitter. And I couldn't really understand man's inhumanity to man. And, and why? For greed? For what? I mean, for what? And on the other hand, with the negative things, aspects that I've had to in, in, encounter, I've also engendered a different uh, concept that's all pervasive in goal setting and wanting to attain and, and wanting to make a contribution to my culture, and also in wanting to see that my family, my background, family background, has a chance to foster and grow 
when you come from a, a, a background where uh, there is only one or two persons who have received a formal education in the society, it makes you expire to, to put, make your offsprings go further, set high goals, work very hard, and forget about skin color, but just be an achiever and to do the very best that you can with what you have. Work up to your potential and your ability.